What were the biggest surprises from Utah football spring ball week one set of practices? Let's talk about it on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments as well as on social media, where you can follow our show at Locked On Utes on X. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on college terms and conditions apply once again locked on college all caps no spaces my name is jt wister so former intern inside the university of utah athletic department excited to be joined on today's show by michelle bodkin of ksl sports and michelle when you're talking about week one of utah spring ball there was a couple of unexpected things and you know we can talk about maybe the ones that drew more headlines because their skill positions in a moment but mm-hmm. if you were to go who would be utah's starting left tackle by the first practice i would have said several names before i got to caleb lomu and it's the most important position on the offensive line so the fact that caleb who hasn't started a game yet as a university of U- utah football player like he was a four star in high school so we know he can play and with mm-hmm. offensive line it, most guys, it's supposed to take them time. That's why I give Spencer Fano a ton of credit for being able to just start on that side, even as a true freshman. And he's over there still on the right side. Yeah. But I think Lomu, like already having like, okay, if we had to name a starter today, it's Caleb Lomu to like have already moved past some of the guys. Like if we look back at last year's spring ball, right? Like a Falcon Kalmatule or I mean, Fano winning the job last year, right? Like to have already be the, have the inside track to the starting left tackle spot when you're just entering your second spring ball, I think is a tremendous credit to him. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think Utah just has an embarrassment of riches in that offensive line room. I I know that everybody was a little bit panicked after the bowl game, uh, but I mean, you have to understand this is a unit that you pick five guys and, and you really kind of roll with those five guys, you know, for months and months and months, starting back usually in spring ball all the way through fall camp. And then of course, through the games. And so, you know, when you only have two or three weeks to fill in two spaces, yeah, it's going to probably look a little janky. It doesn't even matter how talented the guys are, how good the the coach is. Um, it's, it's just, it's a really, really tough thing when you have that flow and, and whatnot going on to then plug two new figures into something that's supposed to move seamlessly all at once. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, this is just kind of a case of, yes, Utah has to replace two really good spots yep. in, in Keen Bills and Satoa Laumea, but they have the horses to do it. And Caleb Lamu is obviously one of those horses. And it, it is interesting. Yes, it's only two spots, but there are guys that could end up getting switched around. And we're kind of seeing that early on with Caleb being put in that left tackle position, which is where Spencer Fano was. And then of course, moving Spencer Fano over to the right side. Is that what it's permanently going to be? I don't know, you know, and, and I, I'm not sure that the coaches know entirely yet either but it's something that they're playing with and it's something that they're experimenting with in order to get those best five guys out on the field plus the extra eight to nine uh that you need it ju- for just in case emergencies and and to give guys breathers and whatnot but uh you know what i've kind of heard at least early on is that they feel like caleb has a very very high ceiling uh and that he was actually kind of a still for the youths when they got him a couple years ago. So the fact that, you know, he's kind of maybe climbing into that position or at least being considered heavily for it. I, I I don't know that it may be, I get that it's surprising, but it maybe shouldn't be as surprising as it feels like it kind of is, you know what I mean? Uh, So this is going to be an interesting thing to kind of track and see, you know, where everybody eventually kind of gets plugged into the offensive line, 
Um, I think it's going to be a little bit of process, but I think they're going to want to figure that out sooner rather than later again to get that continuity, to get that flow, to get that rhythm, because all five of those guys have to basically think like a single person. You make a great point when talking about in some ways it's not surprising because as much as we talk about like, oh, the rankings, the recruiting rankings got this yeah. guy wrong and they got this guy wrong, they get a lot of these guys right. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is he's a four star. Yeah. And so therefore, if you're like ranking, okay, well, who has the chance to eventually be a starter? Naturally, him and Fauna were going to be towards the top of the list. So the mm -hmm. fact that he is in that position in some ways just speaks. I think, like I said, for me, it's like, wow, how quickly he's, if he's already there come right. spring. But the fact that he is there, you're right. In a lot of ways, it shouldn't be because he's had the talent to do it. And now that he's gotten the strength up to par, which is what most guys we take him see it takes that time to get to. Mm -hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense in that point. So like I said, for me, that was the biggest shocker. I'm curious, was there something for you that you were like, whoa, didn't, didn't expect that after week one? I, you know, I, I think it's a little early still for there to be a lot of shocks and surprises, especially where these guys are wearing shirts and shorts. Like how, how much can you gather from, or how much can you be surprised by really? Uh, I, I, I will tell you some things that I was happy to hear um, because yeah. we had heard like some, some kind of rumblings that, um, you know, some of these things were going on. I, I was glad to hear that Michael Mitchell looked yeah. as good as advertised. Um, you know, that that's a name that we've been hearing. None of us have seen really, well, some of us now have, I have not seen him yet uh, because I was in Las Vegas, but you know, some of my peers have now seen him for the first time. And, and the fact that it's kind of being reported that he's looking exactly how we were all being told he, he was starting to look towards the end of last season in practices, I think is really encouraging. Um, you know, I, I know that Brent Keithy had a really impressive catch, like the first bit of media availability where he had to climb the ladder. That's really encouraging, uh, especially with how long the setback was for him as far as getting right, getting the knee okay. Um, and, and kind of the battle, it sounded like that was the fact that he's, he's making jumps for catches and spring ball. And again, I get like, it's, it's fluff and, and like they're being careful with him, but that's still really encouraging. I think development and something that I was like, Oh, okay. Like it's, it's sounding like he's looking like himself early on and that's good. They need him to, um, you know, thinking, thinking about even like a Teo Johnson, we've heard a lot about Teo and how much progress he's made and that he, he could be plugged into a couple of the different holes that they have in, in the defensive backfield. Uh, the fact that again, he, he's looking good, uh, and is looking like what we were told he was looking like, I think is a huge deal. So, uh, I don't know if any of those things are necessarily surprising prizes per se, but they're things that I go, okay, like it's nice to know that what I've been told is matching up to what it's actually looking like. Definitely. And I think to your point, like rumblings of Mitchell are one thing, but like to hear like coach Witt even, and like some of these mm -hmm. guys and like hear everyone bringing up things about it, I think are, are great as well to get to hear and see and seeing Brant and Cam back on the field, mm -hmm. all things that are just awesome to have happening right now for Utah. And I'm so glad that you brought up Teo Johnson because I would like to dive into the secondary <laughs> a little bit more in one second. But first, I want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked On Utes in our friends at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one of the teams that stand out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. And let's stay in U Utah by talking about the Utah State Aggies, are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team has absolutely surprised us with all of their powerful performances, like against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title and program history in the regular season. And they say win life with by going rogue. And that's exactly what the Aggies have done here. And congrats to them on making the field as well as they'll be March Madness Brown. Congrats to head former uh, Montana State Bobcats, shout out big sky, head coach Danny Sprinkle as well. So make sure you guys take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Also want to talk to all of you about our friends at Amazon Fire TV. 
Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire Stick TVs that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to the millions of movies and TV episodes as well as the free and live TV ones. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, the college basketball tournament, or anything in general, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV even recently created a Fire TV channel to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all your favorite sports brands all for free, then in includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more. Even keep you up to date in all the worlds of sports, whether it's March Madness, the NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention all the great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, all available on Fire TV. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels already, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.lockedon. Fire TV. Once again, www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Michelle, one room that I had a ton of questions about coming to spring camp was the defensive backfield. Zamaya Vaughn, obviously a starter. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, it's like, <laughs> oh, I mean, Taylor Johnson played a ton last year, but like, is he going to be a corner? Is he going to be a safety? What are they going to do with him there? I loved what I saw from Jonathan Hall, Nate Ritchie as well. But, you know, you have Gilman coming over from Stanford here soon too. So like, how is that going to all factor into things? And Smith Snowden, love what we saw from him in the bowl game, but not a ton there as well. Mm -hmm. All these transfers are coming in, how it's going to pay out. And we saw last week, Morgan Scally was asked about some of like the transfers and how guys are already doing early. He highlighted Keenan Johnson right away as this quote can be found on Utah Athletics website where he talked about Keenan just being a guy that has a lot of experience at, in college football, right? He's played a ton with Georgia Tech, so that was something he highlighted too. And then talk about Teo Johnson, right? Because he is making the move to safety for sh officially, which is something that was talked about, but still like with so many corners departing and him playing a lot there, you thought maybe that he, he might stick at the corner spot, but it does feel like he's going back to safety. We saw him get some reps back there too, and I, I think it's going to be really fun to see what he can do in the backfield too. So it's been fun to hear about everything going on with the safeties. And one thing I also found really interesting was Morgan Scali also just brought up how they're trying to develop that vocal leader that like Cole Bishop was because yeah. that's one aspect of Cole Bishop and Sione Baki's games that is lost is that leadership weather whether vocal or on the field something that Utah has to replace along with all the on-field production in the defensive backfield yeah uh it, I, I think that's the biggest task at hand honestly for Utah I've, I've said yes like they have some spots on the offensive line they have to figure out yes they kind of need to figure out the pass catchers sort of um Yes, they need to figure out a backup for Cam Rising, but the biggest overall hole that they have to deal with is that defensive backfield. Uh, and it, and some of it's just simply due to the talent that you lost. You mentioned Cole Bishop, Sione Vaki, and then, of course, you had uh, a, a guy like Miles Battle there. That And, um, oh, goodness, why am I... Broughton? So, yes, Broughton, that just has a lot of experience. So you had experience plus like just a freak of nature guy that was just built in such a unique way uh, that made him a bit of a weapon too that you have to replace uh, and, and find new people for. That's that's a lot in one kind of very specific area of the field uh, that I'm sure people are going to target very early on, test and see how well how well did you do plugging those holes in. Uh, but I think the, the good news is, you know, that that is an area that Utah is typically specialized in. They've put a lot of corners and a lot of safeties in the NFL. They have an eye for that position, those position groups. Uh, and I think they do a really good job, not only bringing in top talent, but also under the radar talent as well. Uh, and the fact that Morgan said that this is the like one thing that I'm concerned about. I'm worried about. I want to find the right guys early on and I want to get them all the reps so that they're ready to go, I think is highly encouraging. And then, of course, you know, you mentioned some of the names that, that were brought up early on. Uh, uh, Keenan Johnson, uh, uh, Teo, Teo Johnson uh, and Smith Snowden kind of come come to mind specifically uh, that, that they're doing things that are catching coaches eye early on. I think that's huge. And we'd heard a lot about, again, tail. We got to see tail a lot out on the field. Uh, I, I love hearing that they feel like he can actually fill more of that free safety oh. position. Uh, that's, I 
think where it sounds like they're they're going to put him that he has the ranginess and the ball hawking skills to be able to do that and it's been a little while since Utah's had a guy like that that Morgan Scally kind of brought up it Julian Blackman might be the last one and that was five years ago five six years ago so I know it's crazy that it's been that long but it has (laughs) and and uh so, you know, I to hear that Teo feels like he maybe can fit that bill, I think is really exciting because that is something that Utah's defensive backfield has been missing for a little while. Uh, you know, we started hearing great things about Smith Snowden, and he showed really well in the bowl game that he played in, in that nickel position. And and I I think that's really encouraging. Uh, that A, he he put in the work early and often to, to be in that position and, and B, that, you know, they, they brought him in that, and they see a path for him to get on the field fast because he is a great talent. And then, of course, you know, just hearing that, again, the evaluation process of bringing in transfers is making sense and, and going well, that, that they brought in a guy that's proving that he, he knows what he's doing because he's gone the reps. And so now it's just a matter of getting him up to speed of how Utah does things and what the terminology is and some of that kind of stuff. But it's not so much the instinct part of it, I think. Uh, you know, there's not much. It sounds like the Keenan Johnson hasn't seen or dealt with before. So the, those are all positive things. We'll see if it continues through spring. Uh, and fall camp. And then obviously we'll see what the product looks like soon enough on the field in actual games. But uh, I think right now it at least feels like they're on the right track to getting those, those problems, those pieces solved. It definitely does. And I think what's so nice about this too is, you know, so many other teams, I feel like if they had this amount of turnover in the secondary, it'd be really nerve wracking, Mm -hmm. but it's Morgan Scally. And it's Sharif Shaw. Yeah. And the consistency in which no matter who is back there, Utah's secondaries operate with a high level. I brought this up a few times. Broughton, Battle, they got beat for some big plays every once in a while. I think it always felt a little worse than it was just because it's like, yeah. oh, you gave up a big chunk of yardage. But then it's like, wait, the team didn't even score over 20 points in the game? Like, th- yeah. think about what's going on in the world of college football. We're entering a Big 12 conference where people <laughs> are scoring like 30 and 40 a game. Like, yeah, I know every once in a while those guys gave up a big play or two, but like then Utah would – their defense would hold strong in the red zone and not give up a touchdown. Like, no matter who has been back there, this defense has been exceptional. And the fact that we've all – we've talked about the main guys we probably expect to be the starters like this coming year – and even like a little bit in Snowden goes into this too, right? Cause he's been developed a yeah. CJ blocker coming around for right. another year too. Like, wow. Can he factor in it? Calhoun coming over from Michigan. It's just always nice to know the present and future of the Utah defensive backfield feels good. Not just because of the talent that's been brought in, but because they're being coached by simply put maybe the best defensive backfield coaches in the country. Uh, I mean, absolutely. That that's the thing. Like, I mean, yes, there, there's always some nerves and how is this going to look sort of yeah. thing. But at the end of the day, uh, at, to your point, it it kind of is. Oh yeah, this is this is Utah. This is what Utah does. This is kind of their bread and butter, their specialty. This is what they do well, recruit well, and put into the NFL well. So you know, it there, and that's not to say that there won't be growing pains, there won't be mistakes. Uh, but I, at the end of the day, I trust that this will they'll make the right decisions, and guys will be ready to go bottom line absolutely and hey you know talk about the defensive back talent that utah has they translate pretty well to the nfl too just ask jalen johnson and the bears with uh him just getting paid a (laughs) nice sum of money too for the tremendous season that he just had and i'm really excited to see the clark type of year clark phillips can have too you know Mm -hmm. got year one under his belt got some of the learning things out of the way too got dealt so some injuries as well so didn't even get a fair shake out there so gonna be fun to see what he's able to do and julian blackman's gonna be finding a new home here shortly as well in the nfl ranks so fun to see what those guys can do at the pro level and utah's got a lot of future pros it feels like currently inside their building at this moment competing every day on the hill during spring ball so gonna be fun to watch see how the battle in the defensive backfield continues to play out not just over spring ball but of course in fall camp too one thing that was really fun to watch play out tonight as we're recording this on Sunday was the selection show for the Utah <laughs> women's basketball team. Seeing them officially get in the tournament, there wasn't any suspense for that, but finding out more so where they're actually going to play. And I'm excited to talk about that with Michelle in one moment. But first, want to talk to you guys about something else 
And another nice sponsor we have going on at our friends at Locked On Utes. It's our friends at LinkedIn Talent Solutions. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is a tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn is a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats that they might not have time or the resources to hire properly. That's why LinkedIn has, is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even have just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process that much easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Once again, 2.5 million small businesses. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Also want to talk to you all today about another sponsor of our episode of Locked on Utes, our friends at UCCU. Here's some exciting news. UCCU has just elevated their checking accounts by enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools. Elevated checking is a must-have financial product backed with lifestyle security and financial benefits. The lifestyle benefits alone include cell phone protection, roadside assistance, telehealth with 24-7 access to licensed health professionals with zero copay and exclusive savings on travel, shopping, and dining. And elevated checking is free when you do any one of the following. Use your debit or credit card 15 times or more a month. Make a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more. Or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500. Otherwise, UCCU Elevated Checking is only $6 a month. You can visit uccu.com to open an elevated checking account online or stop by any branch to open an account today. UCCU. Love where you bank. Michelle, the Utah women's basketball team has been tremendous once again. Yes, maybe like coming into the year, we thought they would finish a little higher than a fifth seat, but... The injury to Gianna Neepkins, the Pac-12 being a gauntlet as it always is this year was another tremendous one for the conference. I think it's still really a testament to them that despite the adversity, still a fifth seed. Yes, they're not going to be able to host, but I, I still think they got a good shot to make a run, right? I mean, you're looking at the South Dakota State matchup. They're clearly better than South Dakota State. Now, South Dakota State, give them credit. They've only lost five games on the year. But those, and they were really good in their conference. You look at who those losses came to. One of those two Gonzaga in pretty convincing fashion. Speaking of Gonzaga, that's who Utah would play if they defeat South Dakota State, which I think is a lot of fun too, because Brennan Maxwell, the former Utah uh, sharpshooter, is now on their team as well. So a little fun reunion game if that works out. But in March, it comes down to heroic performances so much. And there are a few players in the country capable of having the types of performance that Alyssa Peely can. So I like the way the bracket shook out for Utah. Yeah. Uh, it's, you always want them to be at home. And there was like the smallest, smallest chance that that could have happened just because of some of the upsets that happened mm -hmm. through the conference championship weekend. Uh, but uh, as it turns out, they, they still got that fifth seed. So they're heading up to Spokane. It's not really that far away. Um, pretty short flight. So that that's nice. Hopefully a lot of people can travel and, and head up for that. But uh, I, as you mentioned, yeah, this is a team that's been through a lot of adversity. And you think about some of Lynn Roberts' earlier teams, like those teams also dealt with very similar types of adversity, um, having key players get injured and, and be out and and having to, to figure out how to get through the season. And, and those teams never still made it to the NCAA tournament. They, it, it just was kind of a let's limp to the finish line and call it a year. This team, I, I think, just shows how well they've done recruiting, um, the depth that they've now built, and, and I think finding the right pieces, the, the, the right attitudes of it's not simply good enough to just limp to the finish line. We want to go kicking and screaming, and, and that's exactly what this team has done. And you mentioned how tough the Pac-12 was. Pac-12 is always tough, but this might be like the like their most chef's kiss uh, of of just I mean just insane how good all these teams are. You have a team like Arizona make it into the 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 women's NCAA tournament. Arizona's not even ranked, so I you know that that just speaks to how good this conference is. Uh, and for Utah to have 
four wins over national nationally top 10 ranked teams in on the year and they weren't even 100 percent themselves i i think is just a phenomenal coaching job and it'll be really interesting to see how far this team can go It'll be a great fun. Can't wait to watch it all play out. We've also got the men's team now in the NIT. So, Michelle, there's a lot to try and keep traffic of when it comes to Utah athletics. Where should everyone head over to if they want to keep it all straight? I'm hoping I can keep it all straight. I'm starting to worry <laughs> about this a little bit <laughs> at this point. But if you want to watch my best attempt at keeping everything straight, make sure you check out kslsports.com. Click on the Utah Utes tab. Almost all of that is going to be me. I've got football. I've got men's and women's basketball, gymnastics. We'll probably start turning our attention to lacrosse and softball and possibly baseball as well. So lots going on uh, that's doing really, really well up on the hill. And then, of course, follow me online on X on threads and on Instagram at Bodkin KSL sports. Great stuff as always. Thanks again for joining us. <laughs> no problem. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes. Mentioned we got to talk about the men's team and the NIT on tomorrow's show. And of course, more stuff previewing week two of spring ball. We look forward to seeing you then.